Freeform University presents Trade Talk. Let's talk about the trend this week. It's been, um, and again, this kind of high-end conversation tonight because during a holiday weekend, we really don't want to be doing too much. Does that make sense? Liquidity is slower, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. People are really not in the market. So the cost of business goes up during those times, if you understand me. So I'm going to go to the heat map first, like I did a moment ago, as Ms. Stone was talking. I just want to have some things in the background, because we didn't have anything going on in the background. I like to put content in the background, even when we're talking, even if I'm not talking, just so where you can see some things that are going on here. So what's happening in 24 hours? Bitcoin's down almost one and a half percent. ETH down one and a third. Uh, BNB's up five percent. There are some really bright green trades here, like Litecoin. Litecoin is up 16 percent today. So that's a really big move here on a DZ, a dead zone. You know, we're talking that we're all celebrating uh, Jesus. He's risen. So we're all celebrating this for the holiday. And man, some of these things are actually moving like Ethereum Classic, uh, Stacks, Immutable. The things that are green when you go to the heat map, they'll give you the symbol the names that are out there like Chili's or whatever. Solana, the ones that are like a lighter green color, these are kind of, they're still bullish, but they're kind of not as bullish as bright green. Um, ton coin 3% on 24 hours, polka dot half percent, uh, Cardano 2%. So there are some things that are going up, but the bright red things that are going down, like Thor, Arweave, Bonk, probably see a lot of short sells on those today. Sui, for example. And this before you go back to the scan, did I have a question here that I missed? Please feel free to ask questions, everyone. Ms. Katie, I'm just open. This is open Q&A after our AMA, which was really awesome, but don't leave those questions out there. Somebody have a question? Hello? You able to hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. All right. Yeah, no, no problem. I understand how, uh, <laughs> how it seems awkward silence. Uh, I just joined in on this. Um, do you do these often? these analysis or like uh, reviews? I will. And tomorrow, I'm sorry, Sunday at four o'clock is Sunday planning session. Every day next week, I'll be hosting a class at 5 p.m. Eastern. Maybe I might change a day earlier, depending on what I have on Thursday. Um, Thursday, I might do something a little bit earlier, but I'm in Florida, so I'm on the East Coast and I'm in the United States. Um, so 5 p.m. is good for me after the stock market close because, you know, I'm, I'm in the stock market. I'm in the futures market, Forex market. I breathe the markets. So my entire routine day in, day out is built around getting up at 6, going to bed around maybe 1 or 2, um, just doing analysis and going through it and setting up trades, taking trades, making wins, losses happen. So our two-week nice. trial, I'll be teaching every day from Sunday through Friday. Afterwards, this is gonna accompany the launch of the Alien Form University. And the Alien Form University is, is gonna be daily content, a couple of different time frames. During this time, my team, which I, I tell you, I value them. They're, they're handpicked, they're very experienced, they're great traders, they're very responsible. They're all money traders. They've all made live money. They're not somebody that would sit there and like, hey, I'm a great paper trader. All these people make money trading live money or there would not be on our team. It would not make sense if they were not with a good track record. They would not be responsible in teaching you how to make money, how to manage equity through wins and losses. So if I may put a big shout out to the team you know, I'm, I'm Katie, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the CEDU, but, or CEDO, but at the end of the day, I've, I've got a great team around me, and so I'm very confident that 
we'll be able to succeed. But, you know, I'm, I'm just a guy that loves to trade. I have a lot of passion for it. I've been doing this for decades, and I've got some people around me that have done this for decades. And I called them up when we came to this project, and I was assembling my team. And I only went to the people that I really had the most respect for and offered them the opportunity. Now, this is an opportunity for them. Um, Nick and the team. Nick and I, just to give you a quick summary of each of the people on the team, Nick and I worked for a company that developed the first automation in the market for individual investors. So Nick was the project manager. I was the educator for the platform. And um, so basically what we did was we created, if you saw what I was talking about here on the website, and this is a bean, if you're clever to hear what I'm saying, this is a bean. Look at quarter four roadmap and look at quarter one, 2025. Look, this is just our galactic milestones. But this is an Easter egg bean. Because what this explains to you is there are, our plans are to move into portfolio manager, automation, and individual strategy labs. So in other words, the, the product that Nick and I first worked on, you could create your own strategies, run them straight up on a server, get into trades. I mean, I would get into to literally like 25 or 30 trades within a day, just running automation. Equity management is key to that. But, you know, again, our longer term milestones are going to go beyond the manual trading mechanisms and more into allowing the systems to work. Does that make sense? So, I mean, it's not a bean, it's a galactic milestone. Now, this tool is completely and totally a fantastic algorithmic tool. I mean, I, I cannot tell you how much I love this tool from the get-go. It had me at Hello, um, kind of like Opcat did. You know, you find the right relationship. The gentleman that created this project, he read so many books on, on he, he took a lot of courses that didn't make money for him, that he went and made his own. And then he shared this with me, and I, I went to this, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And what we're going to do tonight is just a couple of quick scans. But the first thing we need to talk about is the trend, okay, up or down. So right now, everybody knows a bright green long-term trend, a dark green trend. What is that? Click on the trend arrow and then go to the 10-day history. And this shows you that we are less bullish. So we're still in an uptrend, but, you know, the trend could change. Whereas every other, every other thing is a, a condition, like for example, the double bright green. Well, you know what? This is a, what we call very bullish, strong buy. And then for example, Ripple. Ripple, look at this. The 10 day history explains sideways. Best not to take any new trades here. So during the two week trial, what we want to offer you is an understanding of how to read the trends and how to make the scans happen for you and find the signals. We have so many ways to engage the trend to provide you with information to make this really easy. You either agree or disagree. And part of what you have to learn is centered around our calendar with the color key. Very bullish, bright green, very bearish, bright red, and then less bullish, less bearish, which are kind of in the mix. So in any trending system, the bright greens and the bright reds will produce the best outcome because you're trading very bullish or very bearish. Let's compare this tonight. I have another question too. Bring it, bring it, bring it. I love the question. All Come right. on in. Okay. So I, I, I see, well, I'm also driving, so I can only briefly see. Um, you're, you're tracking with the, the trends and whatnot on buys and sells or, or how it's trading sideways. Given given how the info is pulled i don't know if it's possible or something you might be able to do in the future but uh what about calls or or like options you know uh calls or or puts 
given the current trends with these is, is that something you guys might be able to incorporate or already have that well, i'm aware of well i'm very glad to talk to you tonight i want you to pull over i've got a handful of symbols to give you and i need you to write them <laughs> down okay um because you're talking about what's going on in the stock market with crypto and there's a big correlation right now you know fidelity blackrock least ETFs. These ETFs are very liquid, yep. incredibly liquid. There's a handful you can trade options on. A few of those are like double weighted. If you're familiar with like the weighted instruments to where there's the one, the top one that's optional is double weighted. Does that make sense? So in other words, an ETF and let me explain to the community. We're discussing derivatives based on cryptocurrencies. This is why you've had a bull run in, in, in Bitcoin for this quarter, okay? You follow me? So the reason for that is because the large institutions which bought in during the bear market that they created, that they created to drive the price down. Why do you think Blackstone, um, Kathy Wood's ARK, uh, BlackRock, Grayscale, all these big corporations, all these big money center banks are now investing in ETFs because they already went in a crew for it. So they were all buying money. They were all buying cryptos at the lows, driving the price up and down. And now okay. they're creating derivatives to where they make more money. Wall Street's always going to make more money, everyone. We're all individual investors. So here's the next point. This has been a bull run ahead of the Bitcoin halving. I'll give you about a dozen coins if you want, and I'll put them in there and I'll share them with you. And um, afterwards, Ethereum is getting ready to also come in with their ETFs. What's going to happen then? The Dude, next bull run okay. on Ethereum. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And then yep. you're going to have the same big money center banks doing the same thing. And Ethereum is going to go through the flipping ceiling, and Bitcoin is going to go too. That's what I'm thinking. I was, can I, oh yeah, can I get I an was amen? This talk, yeah, yeah, hey, fucking men. I was having this talk with President with uh through Upcat. Oh, I need to play the one over here. Um, and I was explaining exactly what you were just now. And I was like, like, well, not just to him, but to to everyone else. Things are stacking up. It's been all laid out, planned out ahead of time, shaking everyone loose, buying the dips. Once things are official, ETFs go in. They go in and buy in bulk and stuff. And then you got all the, the individuals who they sell, they sell, which accumulates more interest for the institutional funds to buy more, all because of these milestones that are about to hit, like the halving. Uh, the, now we have talks of ETH, uh, ETFs being dropped. I knew that was going to happen. Next will be OpCap being enabled. Not trying to, you know, just talk on that, but like what <laughs> – what would happen should L2 scalability take place with um, in the middle of a bull run? The amount of money that would be made for, I mean, institutions are already made. It's phenomenal. Those who, it's phenomenal. Yes. Yep. All we're doing is riding their coattails. All we're doing is riding their coattails. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> and I am too. And they created this marketplace. We're, Go ahead, we're also providing the average Joe with a tool that shows them how to make the money. Dude, hell yeah. I'm going to look more into this. Uh, all right. Yeah. I, I right. promise I will look more into this. <laughs> well, right. just, just so you I'm, know, I'm a... starting, starting April 2nd, there's a free trial for this for two weeks. You can go in and try the signals yourself and trade them for two weeks for free. I do, do want to LLC? finish the question. Oh, um, sorry, actually, yeah. we're incorporated in Switzerland. Um, we are a corporation. Permit me a moment to go through and answer the question. And everyone, grab a pen pad. This is a little bit off track for crypto. I'm going to run the scans in a moment. But um, I do want to take your question. Those of you that have 401ks or invest in the equities markets, you may want to take these symbols down. And I'm going to 
put them out to you right now. This is um, Granite Shares ETF, double weighted crypto daily. Ticker symbol is Charlie Oscar November Lima. Charlie Oscar November Lima, C O N L. I'll wait to grab a pen and pad. Let me know you're ready to go. I don't want to waste your time, so I want to go back to the scans for crypto. But I also do want to provide you the value of currently where the Bitcoin ETFs are and what those symbols are to where if you want to invest in these, you can look them seriously in your portfolio and add them. Are we ready to go? I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, this will be recorded too, so people can go back and watch. So go ahead. Okay. All right. Charlie Oscar, November Lima. This is double weighted. Now, the risk is in trading something that's double weighted is that you're taking two times the leverage. This is not very, not very much open interest. So as an options trader, you would leave this alone. But it does mimic Bitcoin's price times two. Very volatile. The next one is BitX Bravo India Tango X-Ray. Bravo India Tango X-Ray. This is also double weighted. And as you can see, if I could double track Bitcoin over this, doing the same thing. This is optionable. There is open interest front month, for example, which is April, May, not much open interest. There is open interest to June. But again, you know, if you're an options trader, the implied volatility is too high. We'll speak about this later in education. This kind of, I guess, kind of baiting you about what you'll ultimately learn, right? Here is BTFX Bravo Tango Foxtrot X-Ray. This was just released a few weeks ago. This next one, Bravo India Tango Oscar, Baito, Bravo India Tango Oscar is optionable and it actually has good open interest. And check this out. Most of the open interest is on the call side as opposed to the put side. Now to explain to you, calls to puts, real basic. If there's more open interest on calls, we expect the price to go up. If there's more open interest on puts, we expect the price to go down. And the reason for that is when you using the phone, you call someone up. So therefore call, expect the price to go up. And when you're done talking, you put the phone down. So put, expect the price to go down. Does that make sense? So then here's the next coin. That's Bravo India Tango Oscar. The next one is Grayscale, very liquid. Golf Bravo Tango Charlie. Golf, Bravo, Tango, Charlie. Look at this chart, very bullish. The next one is IBIT, India, Bravo, India, Tango. This is also very liquid, a new one. This is iShares. This is Blackstone. One of the bigger money center banks in the world. And their footprint here. Here's Foxtrot, Bravo, Tango, Charlie. Foxtrot, Bravo, Tango, Charlie. This is Fidelity Investments. One of the biggest money center institutions in the world. And they just released their coin here back in January. I'm getting to a big finish here, folks. Hope you're excited. Now, there are inverse funds. So for my question there from Barry, I think, you know, the inverse funds, we have inverse funds to where if Bitcoin's going down, there's a cheaper coin that's going up because it's inverse. That means that basically, you know, it is it is inverse. It is also liquid for the options traders out there. And I'm getting to the point, there's going to be a big release at the end of this. You're going to love it. Here are the last two. This is HODL, Hotel Oscar Delta Lima, Hotel Oscar Delta Lima. This is Van Eck, another huge fund company. They have triple weighted exchange traded funds. This is single weighted, but look, this this chart mirrors Bitcoin. And the last one I got for you is Kathy Woods, Arc B. Arc B has also been introduced since January. A lot of ETFs came out on Bitcoin at the beginning of the year after it got approved. And look, go take a look at the chart here, and then go take a look at the chart on Bitcoin. And let's just pull it up right now. Let me get to my chart. 
and go to the daily and notice the correlation. And let me go ahead and put one of these over here for you. So let's go ahead and take uh, a symbol and just compare this. Let's do Fidelity's fund, FBTC. And now compare them. Do you see a correlation? Looks pretty identical to me. Oh, let me go ahead and make this a... Uh, a line chart. How about that? <laughs> Come on, folks. You know, um, what I did in creating a candlestick to a line chart, candles go for price action. You see the same thing being built in line charts, but line charts are lagging indicators because pure candles are price action. Does that make sense? So what I'm illustrating when I go to a line chart, I mean, go from the inception of this fund, does it correlate even with the sideways movements on Bitcoin, even with the ups and downs? Any of you learn anything tonight? Yes, I'm learning things. I'm just writing. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm glad you wrote it down. Either. No, it's okay. I'm glad. I just want people to understand. Now, the end of my point, before I go into running the scans for tonight, and I'll run scans very quickly, your time's value. We went pretty over in the AMA, but we have so much going on. Next week's AMA is just going to be, again, just ridiculous out of this world. I, I can't sleep. Like Mr. T's got me so pumped up sometimes. It's like, you know, he can't sleep. And then next thing you know, I'm trying to get Drew to sleep. So Drew feels better. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, I'm like, I can't sleep. I have to get in front of my chart. Look at this thing. When, and mark my words, March 29th, Good Friday. Happy Easter, everyone. He is risen. When the Ethereum ETFs launch, and this is just Bitcoin compared to Ethereum right now, by the way. The Bitcoin ETF compared to Ethereum. Do you see the same correlation? Drew, you see the same correlation? Oh, my God. I'm jumping up and down. There's a line chart. Do you see the same correlation? 100%. It's, no, it's, I mean, it's going to be... Everybody needs to hold on because it's going to be moon time. <laughs> it's going to be unflipping canny. You know, this, this is this is exactly what we're trying to make sure that everybody understands that we're creating for them. We don't have to. We don't have to take your money from you to enrich ourselves. We can help you enrich yourself as we enrich ourselves. So it's a win-win. And then what well, that'll do is enable us, if you're if you're a holder of our token and our token goes up, the value goes up, it creates income for the company, then the company can turn right back around and create even better utility than what we have now. And if you if you had any fathom of what it is that we are going to create, you would lose your mind. And we're so everybody understands. We're not talking about, oh, well, you know, we, we just went and found some dev that knows about coding and he's going to build something. We're talking about blockchain engineers, innovators in the space that we will be teaming with to build ground up utility that nobody else has. Nobody. And they will follow our specifications. Our team is pro at this. So yeah, when we're talking about yeah. developing out the portfolio manager and things like that, everyone, exactly. we have a, we have a big star map and you know, there's some things on the star map that you don't see right now, but to be very frank with you, the, the trade probe is a flipping amazing tool. We're putting a very powerful system in your hands. You're going to love this. I mean, I'll put the scans together right now, but 
you know, this is just a daily scan and every open position that's winning has an average profit of 34%. Sounds like a lot of crazy stuff. So we're going to go down to, to some smaller time frames to explain, but then our, our, our product star map timeline goes into developing utilities along the path as well. So remember, we are technology and education. Before, Alien Form is a community of holders, uh, a great token and great empath. And our first utility truly was the portfolio manager. A revamp on that a few months later. Next thing you know, we have the great relationships built. We're doing the education, we're doing the probe, putting great tools and product and utility in people's hands even as the roadmap grows. So when we talk about, you know, making money as a company, getting paid as individuals, a lot of that goes back into continued development. Don't doubt that for a minute. If you doubt that for a minute, then ask somebody about it, okay? We'll be glad to talk about it. I wanna run a scan here, Drew. I'm on the daily. And uh, just to explain, if you're just new tonight, currently, we're at 3,299 symbols on six exchanges. Our win rate is at 88%, 2,544 winning trades to 345 losers. The average profit per win, just short of 40%. This number is derived from wins and losses. So then the longs, average win, the shorts average win. Now note, there are losing trades on both sides. 410 flat trades, daily average hold time, 39 days. So if you're gonna take advantage of the two week trial, you're probably thinking, I wanna use some smaller time frames." But the biggest profits are really derived from the larger time frames. I mean, if you're gonna be scalping, and let me just show you a couple things. So we're gonna take, and this is just gonna be high end tonight because we've already taken a lot of your time. Let's just take the uptrend and downtrend, the strongest and the weakest and implement our results. Now this improves us to 91%, greatly reduces the number of trades that you have. You have a 39 day hold time. Average profit drops to 25 though only because some of those trades that have probably been off trend or, or doing a little bit you know, more along the line, just averaging time while they're trying to get into their trade stop. So then I'm gonna go ahead and implement volume. My favorite filter, we'll do 150%, one and a half times volume. I do not script this. This is across all exchanges that we're tracking right now that are six. There's only three losses here. All I did was add the trend in volume. Now, granted, this looks ridiculous from where you're sitting. You're like, this can't be real. And here's what we have right now. We have four short sells right now. So at this point, we have a short on KuCoin, Coinbase, a couple of shorts on Coinbase. And if those aren't your exchanges, nothing to do on the daily tonight. Let's take a step back and let's drop down to the smallest time frame. This is 8.01 p.m. Eastern. That means the 15 minute time frame's updating right now. Let's take a look. And don't just sit there with your draw dropping. Ask a question. If you have a question about it, the scan's running right now. So it'll take a few moments. This is only at 73%. We've not implemented some of the other filters though, which you would implement when you're looking for your trade. Is everybody clear with me so far? Yes, sir. Thank you, I appreciate that, William. Hope you're having a great day. Listen, everybody, feel free to jump in. I don't mind getting into a conversation about education. Bring it, don't sing it. So come on in, let me know what you have questions are. Go ahead. Okay, so 
so how many filters can be implemented <clears throat> excuse me at one time oh right great question i love that thank you um our trend filters over here, you can implement every one of these and get every outcome. But I search personally up trend downtrend, and my favorite filters are working strongest and long term pullback, weakest, long term bounce. And then on the other side, I like to look for trades where maybe we're less bullish and we're more green so like you know that's what this is i tend to stay away from things like something that's dark red bright green i'll look at that because then this could be changing from less bearish to bullish or vice versa the dark green bright red the dark green is less bullish the bright green is is very bearish and those are great for setups example just take those two without doing anything else i'll just run those so right now we're at 73%. Those conditions are at 50% because you're kind of sideways. But look how many flat trades you have, 124. So what that means is probably a lot of things that are starting to change in direction because this is actually transitional. The top here, uh, I can't find those conditions. Give me a moment. Let me go to the daily and I'll show you the same thing. One moment. You with me there? Oh yeah, I'm listening. The description, and thank you, the description, let's go to the calendar. I just pulled up those conditions. So the description on 10 days is basically when you're dark green, bright red, you're changing from bullish to bearish. Or when you're dark red, bright green, you're changing from bearish to bullish. I mean, these are kind of aggressive, which we tell you over here in our description. This is a very aggr aggressive strategy, but at the same time, it helps you recognize the trend. Does that make sense? I think what I'm getting here, sometimes less is more. So you want to combine um, filters with maybe one or two implemented and match up the, uh, the signal, right? You're right on point. It's nothing more than that, and I really value your question. Let me just show you what my favorite scan is. I'm a trend trader, so I like to take the trend, and let's see what happens. We're at 88%. Let's go to the 15-minute time frame and do this, okay? We just updated there. So we go to 84%. Without the trend, look at the difference. Your bottom line's improved 11% shorter term with the trend, and we're looking at 3,298 symbols. So I'm going to go ahead and put the trend in and see the progression of the filters, which is what your question is there, just old man. So we improved to 84%. We're on six different exchanges. So let's say that we're going to go ahead and work with one exchange tonight. Uh, anybody have a preference from the six we're using right now? Binance Crypto, Gate.io, Coinbase, Kraken, Cooper. With Binance, I think. All right, let's do it. And then boom. I didn't do this. You drove this. Okay, so we're at ninety-one percent. I I like my driving right now. <laughs> I'll let you drive all the time, man. That's a really hey, great Kevin, outcome. A Go ahead, bring it. Uh, can we run the scan against our watch list? Absolutely. If you create your own watch list, you can go and just run every scan. I'll show you that in just a moment because I do have a watch list, a watch list to share. Hold on. Um, let me finish what I'm doing. I love that. Thank you for asking. And again, like I said, the community drove my scan tonight. We're on... Binance, double green, long-term pullback, double red, long-term bounce. Average profits, 1% conservative. Aggressive, 1.5%. Now, with leverage, you'd be making some good coin. There's 13 flat, even one-to-one, -one, you're making good coin. We don't have 13 flat trades. A lot of things that are happening tonight are on the short sell, and that's okay. 
But the point is, you know, look at what's happening. Now go put in my volume filter. Bam, 94.5%. Only, two, only two losses. And the average profit is 3% on Binance right now. So, is that... so if I leverage the heck out of that, it's a good chance. To see <laughs> yeah, um, that's why I'm saying, everyone, during the trial period, work with the trend and this is the 30 minute signal i'm going to do the same thing and the 30 just updated at eight o'clock eastern here is the uptrend downtrend and please look how simple this is okay show my results do they improve they do so then we'll put in another exchange let's go ahead and go back to binance 65% not looking so pretty. That's okay. We're still making money. Go to the volume spike. Boom. May I drop the mic? Yes, drop it. I mean, it's not that hard. That was just like really only two filters. My God, 5%. You're only making 88%, but the average gain is 5%. But you know, four losses out of 34 trades, I can deal with that. So how do we know what filters to move and when to move them? Well, really what you wanna do is identify where your trading plan is, Tarina, from the larger time frames down to the smaller. I'm actually trying to not show so many great win results tonight because right. we've been showing some really knock your socks off things, but you wanna see something knocks your socks off? Yeah, I do. All right, go to the weekly signals. All right. This is 3,299 symbols. Your responsibility trading this time frame is looking at your charts once a week. So currently the average hold time is 122 days. That means of all the open positions that this is what your hold time is. The That doesn't mean you couldn't win faster or slower or lose faster or slower. It's just, this is the average hold of aggregate. The average profit's 28% on the conservative at 89%. Here's where your socks get blown off. This is so hard for people to believe. We wow. went from 29% to 145%. But understand, and to be very candid with everyone, this held during the bull rally we just went through, right? Right. So when's the next bull rally happening? Around the full moon. When the Ethereum launches their ETFs. So, I mean, this is where things go on. The, the, the full moon, the, the um, what's that, the eclipse, right? <laughs> well, yeah. moving through the eclipse. There we go. You're right. April um, but 8th, look, is that a good time? Yes, ma'am. And this is the full basket. Let's go back to just, for example, looking at the Binance basket. With no filters, the weekly Binance basket on conservative, on aggressive is 100%, on conservative 28%, but 96% wins, folks. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know how I can frame it any better, but how hard was this to do? Crypto.com weeklies, 96% with the trend, 29% average profit, 104 on the aggressive. Um, I mean, I, I hate to sound like a cheerleader, but I really can't wait for you to begin the trial. We've been working so hard for this to get this in your hands and my God, gate IO, Average weekly profit is 248%. If you could sit there and look at the trade once a week and go live your life and make great profits, would that be worth it? Yeah. Let's go to the two hour time frame and just say, here's the two hour period, no filters, 36 hour average hold time. This is a time frame that I trade, 240, 120. If you don't know me, I have a young family. I've got, uh, I'm an older guy, but 
getting married until I met my first wife and and then we had this family going on. And uh, so, you know, I have to be engaged, I have to be present with my children. We're also big church attendees. And so everything has to be coordinated with me, timing is everything. And the next few weeks, I'm telling you, I, f I feel like Rocky going through and training to fight Apollo Creed during the first original Rocky movie. Because I know that personally, I have to draw a lot out of myself to engage, to be in the community, taking live trades with you, going through the education process. Can you hear this in my voice? Yes, so, you can hear it in your voice. I hear, you can feel I hear, it. I, I hear it too. I mean, we're going to do this. It's going to be huge, and it's going to be a great windfall. It's going to make our charts blow up. As our utilities come out, more people get involved. Other communities got, cr start crossing into us and learning what we're doing. The OpCat community is outstanding. Great presentation for president, and I'll tell you, Poppy was really huge in this. And then next week's AMA, Miss Stone, at the wedding, we even got more stuff to drop. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's never ending right now. You know, KD, I was wondering, um, they made this deal with Mr. T after we hit a certain amount. He's going to wear some kind of outfit, and maybe we should do a deal with you in a cheerleading outfit. I think that would be fun. <laughs> well, I got skinny legs. You wouldn't want to see me That's doing cool. this, something like that. <laughs> hey, KD. Yes, sir. I'd just like to make a quick comment. You know, as having trading experience and, you know, navigating the interwebs, you know, it's it's a comfort for me to come into a space where I can learn a tool, learn a language, learn the definition of everything, and build the skills to uh, change my life. This is just amazing. I'm so appreciative of that. And I don't want anybody to feel like there's a question that's that's dumb. You know, a lot of people won't ask a question because they don't want to sound misinformed. But, you know, reference back to when I was showing everyone the ticker symbols for the exchange traded funds cross Bitcoin. Okay. Not everyone in this room cares about that. Maybe a few of you do. I spoke about options language, calls and puts. I took a moment to define what the logic, the basic reason behind a call or a put and what the direction is there. Does that make sense? So believe me, the greatest gift in my life was being able to have the gift of gab. Um, and I bless my mom for that. But also, I've always had a passion for teaching. And the reason for that is because of, of people that didn't do things right. It really made me angry. So when Drew and I connected, you know, um, and then this project happened like it did, I was also very engaged because I don't like people doing things wrong. I don't like people being peacocks that are blowing smoke up your rear. You know, it's all about building generational wealth, making money, enriching our lives, making ourselves in a great mental space, happy and confident. And this is no joke. Every step along the way, I feel like God is guiding me to where we are now. You know, I've spoken about this with Drew. It's like, you know, this is exactly what the crypto space needs is a, a great project with super utilities and a solid foundation of education to where everyone can learn and earn and make money and evaluate other projects and as our community grows with other projects, bringing in some of these other great groups. And we vetted them so well. I, I mean, I get so many DMs and, um, you know, Mr. T, I'm sure, gets so many DMs and Drew gets so many DMs. The rest of the team gets DMs. I'm not the guy that makes the decision for marketing. But I am here to deliver with Nick, Tad, Joey, Drew, humbly as part of the team, the best education experience that's out there in the market space. And I'll tell you that. We have the best utilities. We have our, a star map to develop out further. This is a tech education company. So this is not like your normal project out there. We all want to have a common foundation of education to make sure that you all know how to make responsible decisions, execute trades, make money. You can see the tools that we're using are pretty well developed as well. So let me go ahead and put in my super volume pump. I'm sorry, I, you just really got me excited about things that are going on. Um, it's not doing so well. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So what I wanted to know last time um, when I was on here with you, um, because like you, my schedule, oh my God, is extremely busy. And then church and so on and my business and 
So you had told me something about maybe I can set something for up like in the mornings before I go to work or in the afternoon. So what I wanted to do is get with you to see. You, I, I didn't know I can have a schedule with this um, to where oh, yes, I don't miss out on on trading or or the best times for me. That's a great question, Mary Jane. And and what we're looking at is seven different trading strategies okay now your busy schedule you're not doing the 15 you're not doing the 30 you're not really doing an hourly time frame you simply don't have the time to manage that plan with your business does that make no, sense that's right so, i don't so we have to decide whether you know a two-hour plan is something you manage a four-hour plan is something you manage i would recommend you look at larger time frames like, for example, you and I are in a similar situation. I'm very busy through the day. There are times where I can do the 15-minute trade. Like, you know, I'm up late at night. I'll be in front of my computer. Volatility is happening. Heat map shows me some good trades. I'll stay up and do some day trading, you know. But at the end of the day, if you're managing your daily business, you don't really want to be embedded in smaller time frames that you can't manage. So um, the two, the four-hour time frame, those would be the largest ones you should be looking at. Uh, the smallest ones, actually, in my opinion. And uh, the average profit there is 3%. Trade with the trend. Use the recommendations that I'm showing you within just putting the best trends together and improves your outcome. Even though this is only 71%, and the markets, it's the weekend, folks. We're not seeing much price happen. But 3% on average, there are losses here. We're at 71%. The average profit is seven percent so you know you'll be in a loss you'll think wow it's not working but this is a numbers game everyone training is about going into your plan implementing the plan getting off the ground now if you get in at the bottom you get out the top easy you made money but let's say you get in when the trends are going through a sideways trend to me anything below 70 percent is a kind of a rough trading environment but then you take the flat trades that are there and Mary Jane, I like to trade Tether, so I'm going to go ahead and put in USDT. I don't know what your cross-currency is that you like to do, but, you know, here we go, and we're at 73%. There's 14 flat trades across Tether, and some of these are going to give us new buys or sell signals. And if some of these are coins you like, then you set up the plan, you implement the entry. Once the entry occurs, you put in uh, you put in your stops and limits as well. So really, what you're doing is you're putting together what we call a set it and forget it style strain. So for example, you set your entries, you work. Later in the day, when you have time, you come back. Let's see whether you got filled or not. If you didn't get filled, there's no risk. If you got filled. And of course, you want to see the price going up in your direction. Um, but once you're in the trade, the only thing that matters is navigating the targets and stops. Um, but this is one of my favorite signals. I also am very much a fan of the daily time frame. I'm sorry, I have to drop the mic again for a minute. Just a moment. That was, that was ridiculous. Hi, Mary Jane. Hey, how are 100%. you? Wow. I did not script this. Um, I just pulled up the parameters that we put together here. This is Binance. It looks like a no lose situation to me. Is that right? You well, listen. Regardless. Right now, this is no lose situation. But markets move in waves, everyone. This is where the education comes in to help you identify when to not just sit there looking at one direction. I mean, I, I have to admit, this is a very amazing outcome. I did not script this beforehand. In other words, I'm running the scan in the parameters. I'm answering Mary Jane's question. Mary Jane is our chief financial officer. She'll be delivering our financials next, next week. And I want to help her be a student of the education. That's why she's asking questions. The aggressive here is making 75% again with no flipping losses. No losses across Tether on Binance right now. Go find another system that even does 
a third of that win rate, that'd be worth owning. I mean, my God, I'm sorry. I'm, I, you know, my pom-poms are kicking up right now, and I'm doing like cartwheels. Anyway. That's outstanding. So it is outstanding. Mary Jane, does that answer your question a little bit? I mean, I yeah, feel like, you know. It, it, it does, but what I'm going to say Evan, also. I'll be coaching you in the larger time frames, Mary Jane, and part of what will enhance your knowledge about um, is in some basic chart analysis to agree with the signal. So in other words, don't trade blind, take a look at something that you're doing and agree or disagree. And let me just give you a quick example. Then Drew, you hop on with your question. So for example, laggy swap, we got a signal there. It's a good signal. Let's look at the chart. We'll look at the, the most powerful feature, which is the all time frames view. That checks the boxes. That looks really good. We're actually above the stop loss or around the stop loss right there on the 240, but we have a new buy at 38.18. So then look at the chart. And then this is what we teach you with the education. We teach you to learn to identify whether the signal agrees with the chart action, price analysis. You know, for example, I'll look at this and you've heard me and Drew talk, you know, Drew doesn't like to trade these big wicks. Me, I'm a candlestick trader, I'm a pattern trader. I see support resistance. I go back and I'll go back and map where the targets are and I'll choose the very best setups. And then I'll put the order in and I'll live with the win or I'll live with the loss. But at the end of the day, it's, it's you know going through a process of evaluation, learning some basic things that happen in the marketplace and being able to read the chart, understand the language. And our team is very committed to that. Mary Jane, you're gonna be a great student. Thank you very much. Let, let Mary Jane Thank go you. ahead with the, her other question and then, I, you know, I'll, I'll throw out there what I wanted to throw out there. Okay. So what I wanted to know is, and I know it would be up to me, um, my trading amount um, would be based, because I'm not familiar with leverage trading, okay? So I'm going to be learning just like everyone else. So what would be a comfortable amount for me to invest, understanding that I I took the chance of, of losing and I, and I understand that. But for me as a beginner, what would what would be good for me until I get comfortable with it? Start small. Yeah, maybe that, twenty bucks. That's the answer. Start small. And I mean small can be as low as ten dollars margin into a trade. Yeah, exactly. And everybody needs to realize, okay, when, when you know, when I showed the examples of bringing a $155 wallet up to almost $5,000, okay, over that period of time, 80% of my trades were less than 20 bucks margin, 80%. That you guys just, that this is really awesome. Thank you for that. That's what so March is important. And so again, like, 10, 20, $30, $40. You're just building confidence in what you're doing. The profits will come. And I think that that's what Drew's point is. You know, getting familiar with margin is the biggest challenge for our group, in my opinion. Because if you've not used margin, it's a two way challenge. It could really blow up your account in the wrong way if not done responsibly. So that's why we're saying do this small, get familiar with it. Even 10 bucks, you're in the game. You might make a couple of dollars, you might lose a couple of dollars, but you're comfortable in learning the method. When you agree, Drew, I mean, that video yeah, on well, Wednesday I mean, was going know, through I'm the gonna, same thing. I'm Go going to throw this example out there. So, you know, Kevin came in one day when I was sharing uh, trades that I was in, and he's like, my God, how many trades are you in? I was in 10 trades, 11 actually. I was managing 11 trades, all 11 were winning, and the, the largest margin of any of those trades was 10 bucks. Okay. The thing is, is if I do 10 trades for 10 bucks and they all make me 10 bucks, that's a hundred dollars, hundred dollars a day is $700 a week. That's, you know, a hundred dollars a day for a month is $3,000 a month. 
Yeah, and, and I'm okay 50, with it until for I learn it. For a $50 subscription fee. This is what I'm trying to get across to everybody. You do not have to rate, risk the bank to make money. And then as you get further along and get comfortable using the system and you build your your uh, account up, then you can risk a higher percentage. But still, you know, you've got to manage those risks. If you've got a thousand dollars total in your account, what's the maximum amount of money that you should be risking all told in all the trades that you have? Does anybody know? Probably. Does anybody know the answer to that question? Fifty bucks. Not you, Bill. Not you, Bill. You okay. already know this. I want somebody who's never done trading. If you have a thousand dollars in your account, what is the maximum amount of money that you should have in margin in trades? Three hundred. I don't know. One to three percent. Hundred percent. <laughs> okay, explain One that. One to three percent. So 2%. you should have no more than one to three percent of one thousand dollars risk in trades. That's baby steps. But so we should be trading three percent of the thousand. One to yes, three percent of maximum. the okay. Okay. Three percent okay. maximum. And okay. that's all trades added up. Okay. Oh, Why okay. do you do that? Why do you do that? Some Does trades are gonna know? win, some trades are gonna to, lose. To, so you to, want to make sure to mitigate loss. Risk mitigation. Risk management. We're not here to teach you equity how to lose management. Money. We're not here to teach you how to lose money. And we're not telling you you're gonna make a million dollars overnight. Okay. Now that's what a lot of companies that bring out these these tools will do is they'll hype it up, but they don't teach good money management. People get wrecked, they get mad, they get out. That's not and, why we're here. We're here to teach you. We're here to make sure that you're safe. We're he but you know, we're here to teach you proper risk management so you can build wealth, not lose it. Now this information you just gave, Drew, it is so valuable for me. Because now it really puts me more at ease to know that I really need to be in the classes to learn it, start off small, even with the uh, one to three percent of the total. So this this is very, very important for me. Right. And I mean, look, that th those numbers and Kevin will tell you because these are the numbers that Kevin teaches. If you have a million dollars in your wallet. You shouldn't be risking more than 3% of that million dollars at any one time. Absolutely. We're very key on equity management. I mean, I will tell you that if you've ever heard Nick talk in the chat, um, you'll know that Nick is a person that loves to scale in, loves to scale out. He does that because of equity management. Um, Tad's also a big equity management. And uh, I would tell you that I would not be in the position I'm in if I hadn't learned how to take losses. Losses are going to happen. So that's why we don't want to, you know, go all in here. I was kind of joking about 100% a minute ago. I knew people that had a different appetite for risk than I do. I'm more conservative. Some people are more aggressive and they may have a longer timeline to retirement than I do. But, you know, to each their own. I want everyone to have a foundation of taking the perspective of starting conservative. If you want to amplify what your positions are or whatever as you're making profits along the way, it's entirely up to you. But the important thing is that we all start off jumping off the same platform, you know, off the same pier with the same common knowledge, which is why I feel like the, the education is so very important because we all have the common knowledge of what mitigating risk is, what setting stops and targets are all about, and then also knowing how to do equity management, which is really the first thing that should be on our mind before we even open a trade. What is my risk? That's the number one answer before you open a position. Does that make sense? Yes. Kevin, yes. Makes sense. Yes. Uh, Kevin, uh, you know, it's the whole point of what you're pointing out here is the psychology side. 
And the fact is that trading is a very personal thing. So you got to do some introspectral analysis of yourself as you trade and how you feel about what you're doing and yeah. uh, learn to separate all that. And that's what he's been talking about. And it, it, this is great. Well, yeah, this is that's called trading without emotion. And Bill, you're 1000 percent right. And you need the, the one thing you have to do. It is so easy to get drawn into the, oh, I could make $10,000 on this one trade. Yeah, you could also lose $10,000. Okay? that And that's the bottom line. So, do you, think do you risk the whole do 10? That? Do what? I said, do you think I'll be able to trade without emotion? You have to. You have to learn that. It's a learned skill. Well, I've been reading the book. Well, I, you know, emote. Look, trading with emotion is one of the worst things that you can do. No, she's been reading in the book we spoke about that yeah. I recommended, and so, I know. Um, yeah, Mark doing Douglas. a great job. Yeah, Mark Douglas, two asses, trading the zone. Google it, get it for free. If you're listening to us live on YouTube, um, he's a personal friend of Nick, myself. And my wife, Angie, we have, have shot education videos and done television with him in the past. Unfortunately, he passed away. He's a trading psychology coach. And the first time I met him, it was like, you know, we were speaking the same language immediately after he passed away. His family made his PDF available on the Internet for free. And if you're combating those emotions with trading and learning to accept wins and learning to accept losses, because you have to take wins, folks. You have to learn how to win and live with the win, okay? This is something, you know, it's it's hard enough to teach people to lose, but it's harder to teach people to win because we're trying to make as much as we can out of every trade, but that's not the point. The point is hitting your targets, winning your trade, making your profits, reducing your risk, period. So this is psychology, and I would tell you, if you're listening to this on demand, do yourself a favor and, and – his family, again, put it on the internet after he passed away. It was his wishes that it be free for people out there like you and me. So, um, you know, I'm a big trading what's psychologist. The of, what's the name of it, Katie? Um, the man's name is Mark Douglas, D-O-U-G-L-A-S-S. -S. Um, Mark Douglas, M-A-R-K. And the book is called Trading in the Zone. No, I'll, no tell, again, I'll tell everybody. We don't have an, affiliate, we don't have an affiliation with the, the, the Douglas family or anything. There's just a personal resource that I've used that I share with my students. Um, and so, again, we're not promoting nor profiting or anything from sharing this with you. It's just like if I gave you, like, Google Maps or something, okay? So if you well, want to look at that. Kevin, let me throw ahead, this Drew. in real quick. If, if you have an Amazon account, then you can go to the Amazon uh, books, um, the audio books, and you'll have, you'll have automatic credits and you, you can use those credits to get that book on audio and listen to it at any time you want to. So it's free. And it, uh, this is a book that we covered in Shibnobi Learn back when we had Shibnobi Learn. Um, and, it's a very, very good book to, to follow. And my team have, have, have worked with the, the Douglas family over the years extensively, as I shared. My wife and he um, were on television several times. My wife is so gorgeous. And um, Nick was on with him, and I was on with him, and we were all speaking to it. So we actually know a lot of these people in the community that we could draw in later. Those are just contacts and relationships for further development. But – Trading psychology, everyone, is what you battle when it's just you in front of your computer. The time in between decision-making time. Let's say that you get into the trade, the, the trade's going down. You haven't hit your stop loss yet. What are you doing right now? You're in a trade that's down. You haven't hit your stop loss yet. What are you feeling like? You're not feeling very confident right now because your trade's down. But when you enter a trade, you accept the risk. You have a stop loss, you have a target, it's a numbers game, and we have to become comfortable in our trading head, in our trader's mindset of following the plan to finish, 
You know, you don't just get into something. The minute you're down, you get out, you're going to lose money hand over fist. You have to understand how to develop the ability to stay with your roles, win or lose. Now, if you lose, you're going to think, wow, my roles are not working. But market conditions constantly change. So when we're using our tool, we're using trending indicators, trending signals, momentum indicators like I've shared with you with the volume spikes and things like that. We can overcome a lot of the initial barriers that a lot of traders will find just getting out of the gate. Because we're overcoming those, we're providing precise entry and exit signals. You've got everything that you need as a formula to win. But it's just gaining the confidence to follow the plan over time. And let's say that you just began and you lost. You know, you're losing five or six trades. You're thinking, wow, this is not working out. Well, sometimes that's just what happens within the market. But if you go through and you follow your plan, you follow the system, and you develop, like Mary Jane was explaining, the time you can trade, and you follow through the rules, you're going to find success. Success is a formula. Does that make sense? And so when you have a platform that provides you the formula, all we have to do is decide which are the most appropriate trades to do and then follow the plan. So the trial period is all going to be about helping everyone learn how to interpret the signals and follow the plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kev, let, let me also throw in there real quick because you touched on it slightly. Um, but I'll give you an example. If, uh, if everybody goes and looks at the screen, Kevin Sharon, that YFDAI USDT, um, the entry price of 5033 right now um and on the 15 minute or on the 30 minute so you got an entry price of uh 5177 and it's saying right at 5706 and then 6236 right um what what some people will do is they'll be like oh well um yeah, I'm getting another signal, and it's telling me right at 63 and 65, and maybe it'll go to 68, so you move your take profit to 68 because you're worried about leaving money on the table, okay? That's a good way to lose money. It's, it's a good way to lose money because you never reach those targets. So take the targets that are given and feel good about the fact that you're in a profit. Oh, well... I could have made a thousand percent. I only made nine hundred percent. How many people make nine hundred percent on on a trade and do it on a regular basis? So, you know, you've got to be happy with the profit that you're in. And and this goes back to the trading without emotion. You can't you can't get that FOMO and that hype and think, oh, it's going to keep going. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep going. Get out when it tells you to get out. Another opportunity will present itself. It will scale back. It'll retrace. You'll get another opportunity to get back in that coin again. The yeah, other Andrew, thing I want to say, go ahead. I, I, I want to say one other thing. Do not play this game of your favorite token or your favorite coin. Something that, that is near and dear to your heart. Like, oh, well, I got in SHIB in the beginning. Therefore, every time I've got an opportunity to do SHIB, I'm going to jump on SHIB. Don't play that game. Give what the markets or take what the market's giving you. Don't don't get caught up in um, just trading your favorite coins because there's a good chance you're going to miss out on good opportunities for profit. And my voice is going out again, Kev. So I'm going to shut up. I don't disagree with you. Not about the shutting up part, but. Um, here we are on MEXC. Look at our chart. Oh, my gosh. It's down a little bit today, but pretty bullish there. Um, yeah, confidence and uh, numbers are what's built out over time. I mean, two weeks, not really enough time to let you really see what's going to happen in 60 days. But it's enough of a time to allow you to find some things and learn some things. Remember, the Alien Forum University basic education is going to fill in so many spaces, everyone. And when we go into the more advanced classes and go into patterns, all these other things, building out um, AIs and things like that with the education that we're offering, it's going to build a lot of connections and build a lot of bridges to where you can trade every market. A chart's a chart. I can tell you this is Boeing right now. I can tell you this is Exxon right now. You wouldn't know the difference. What you would know is that it's bullish. 
Does that make sense? So the point of where our journey is going to go, and my God, this has been a long AMA tonight. Um, we, we jumped into a meeting before we came into the AMA tonight, and I can only tell you that that meeting was super bullish. If Mr. T is in the room, he's probably still doing calisthenics off that. Um, but sincerely, for everyone in the room, education is like college, okay? We're committed to this. We'll be holding your hand, taking your questions every day. What I don't want to have anybody in the room not do is not feel like they have a voice to raise their hand and ask a question. I mean, consider when you're in grade school, how would you have learned if you didn't ask your teacher a question? Um, and we have some great instructors on the team. Everybody has a little bit of a different trading style, um, but we also have exposure in multiple market spaces. So we're able to understand relationships that develop within the market, as I shared with you, looking at stocks. I can pull up charts right now, and we're in a different conversation about global money and equity flow. Um, these are things that will be caught down through the entire point. But, I mean, if you can hear what I'm saying, I am so gratefully excited and ready to go. I mean, the second when you get the probe in your hand, I can only start hopping up and down. I might get it like a unicycle and drive around the neighborhood. On that note, Katie, I got some uh, questions coming from the last spotter on the in the dugout. I'm not even on, at the bat. Um, this is Maxi. Do I need Maxi to proceed in this whole journey, or can I continue trading on the platform that I've been trading on, which is Bitmart? Good question. Nobody needs Mexi, okay? The Mexi relationship is simply because we use this for leverage trading. I have a Coinbase account. Coinbase is not leverage trading. So Coinbase, for example, if I took this signal, I'm making 7%. If I took the aggressive, and this is actually not a bad looking setup, by the way. Um, but then, you know, you're making 7%. This is one to one, meaning your, your leverage is one to one. If I'm using 20% margin, then, for example, my 7% profit would be 14%. 30% pro, uh, leverage, that 7% profit's 21%. That's why Mexi is a a tool to use. And let me just elaborate on that a little bit. I do, and I appreciate your question so much. I don't want people to become uncomfortable in trading by not understanding how to use leverage, when to use leverage. It took me a little bit of time to learn leverage. I first learned leverage using stock options and trading futures. And then, of course, trading Forex. When I first began Forex trading, this was when we had margin that was 500 to 100%, 50%. Some people would blow their accounts up overnight or in two days, making bad decisions, having too much money, and then getting margin calls. So this is a very serious question about equity management and a very mature question about how to manage it. And you hear how serious I am about talking about this. I mean, I, I coached a lot of people through the Forex Wild Wild West days. And now when crypto came out, I, I call the crypto market exactly as it happened uh, from the top to the bottom because I knew what the institutions were going to do all along because of what I learned from crypto and um, from Forex. I saw how institutions came in and took over everything. And so then at that point, maybe 20 years of my trading career, I learned, yeah, don't mess with Goldman's. BlackRock or Fidelity, and I was a Fidelity employee for a number of years as manager. Um, so, you know, you follow where I'm going through with the process and the solution here. Um, leverage is a great thing to do to make larger profits happen on smaller gains. Like, for example, a 1% gain could become a 3% gain. A 4% gain could become a 5% gain, a 10% gain. Average profit right here is like, and this is on everything. 
and then that. So you're 10 leveraged, you're 20 leveraged, you're making 3% on your profit. So it comes down to just making sure that you don't take large positions, for example, if you can't handle that risk. Like Drew is right on point, 10, 20, 30 bucks, get comfortable with what you're doing. Don't If you're using leverage, do not feel compelled to put 500, 600 bucks into a trade unless that's what your normal equity management rules are. Start small, become confident, become competent with the, the way to enter and exit the trade. But at the end of the day, you can use any broker, whether they're a listed broker or not, okay? You can use any broker that we have, whether listed or not, and follow the signals for the trade. So KD, okay. Yes, ma'am. So the different exchanges, does it make a difference with which one ever we use? Um, is it different trading or different percentages with the high and lows or certain, um, or is it people using, let's say Binance? There's so many using Binance, so it's different trading. So many using Gate.io. So it's, is it so? Is it something dealing with the exchanges to what we need to consider? That's a great question, Mary Jane. Thank you. And really, what we're talking about here in customizing the exchanges is allowing our community to go to a listed exchange, and every exchange is going to have a different price. You know what I mean? And that's the point. So what we're doing here is customizing our signals to listed exchanges, but we also have like an aggregate pricing of everything. So in other words, if we're on crypto.com and you have a crypto.com account, our signals will be closer and also track the coins that are available to you, immediately filtering those out. So that means that crypto.com, you're looking at 117 symbols, where if you're using Gate.io, then we've got several more symbols to choose from, more to filter through. That's 1,400 symbols. Does that make sense? But because, and let me take you to this point, and I think this will be great. Your question's awesome for everybody. Look how many symbols are across Bitcoin. We have 307 symbols that are across Bitcoin. All right. So then we start to filter that down, go to like crypto.com, start to see the number that we have that are there just on Bitcoin. And this is not necessarily in fiat or anything. This is just like open. So for example, myself, I'd be going to BTC and USDT just to see the outcome because that's what I trade. That's a good outcome. Um, but again, this is just on one exchange, just cross crypto.com on Bitcoin. Um, actually, that's DAI. Why is that there? I know. Oh, because because the reason it's in there is you selected the USDT. So yeah, it's going to show you any tokens traded against Bitcoin or Bitcoin itself, and then any USDT uh, tokens that are being traded again. Yeah, I'm going to rectify that just by going across the greenback. That's not on crypto.com. Let's just run that on all exchanges. But you get my point. The point is, you know, um, the exchange that we have draws data and provides other coins that may not be available, like on Coinbase or crypto.com, as we saw. And we know that Mexi has a large number. And so what we're doing, Mary Jane, is, is customizing the price signals to the exchange. We want you to have the data that's more relevant. For example, like on Coinbase and Binance, these are both Bitcoin, US dollar. Why are they not at the same price? 69,711, 69,666, or 66,224 on KuCoin. Different exchanges have different prices. But, so but what we're why? doing- why? Well, that's because that's supply and demand on those exchanges. Okay, I mean, you're, you're talking okay. you're talking about um, bidding and asking, buying and selling. This is the action in the marketplace. And I love your question because this is a great opportunity for me to step in and teach. 
give you all a flavor of what I'll do for you. But I'm illustrating and showing you, in fact, these prices updated at 12.45 a.m. on the 15-minute time frame. But look how the price is different for each exchange. They're all long, but they're long at different prices because the, the supply and demand exchange rate on the different exchanges are different. We don't have one centralized pricing exchange for Bitcoin. I mean, could, could, Gemini... Could you take advantage of arbit what was the arbitrage in that situation with the KuCoin price and the uh, the higher price, or no? Sorry to interrupt, my way. No, it's not an interruption at all. Glad for, for you hopping in. I mean, you're talking about pennies off the railroad tracks, but income is income. You'd have to monitor the different exchanges to set up either side, um, but income is income. Arbitrage to me is just like um, dividends. So are you, so can we be on, which I'm probably so, can we be on several exchanges at the same time? Of course. Yes, ma'am. I don't mean to say of course. Yes, ma'am. It doesn't matter which exchange you have. If you have something that we're not listed with, okay, just go to all exchanges and then look at the buy and sell prices. They should all be very similar, not too far off. Look at the targets, map out the targets. And what we'll do is show you how to take the entry point and map it in the charts and either agree or disagree. Um, just a couple of simple things, Mary Jane. It's not that hard. Uh, what's hard about it initially is our, our minds. You know, the way that we come into this with emotion and, and the dollar moving up against this, the dollar moving down against this. Some people have a hard time just getting around the psychology of it all. But then settling in the trending signals, you're going to love this. I'll tell you that because, I mean, you've got a very technical mind. You're a bottom liner like me. You're a numbers person like me. So show me the money is what I want to see. And I want you to be able to to attain that roadmap very quickly and very simply. You don't have time to sit in front of your computer all day long looking at charts like I do. You know, that's what I do. That's my business. But you run other business. You need to be able to sit there and put your roadmap together, your trade plan together, and trust it and trade it. And I think that's a great story for people in the room who maybe don't understand where their trading plan really sits. You know, the 15-minute the 60 minute, you could trade these in blocks of time. Like Drew might take a trade on the 60 minute time frame and manage it until it's done and go to bed. You know, it, you don't have to sit there and watch your computer every hour. It might just be like, okay, I'm looking for a trade right now. I'm fishing right now. I'm only fishing for two hours. If I catch a fish, I'll take it and go home. So then you take a trade, you're looking at saying, okay, well, here's Maker. We got a trade at 36.76.81. This is long because the trade's at 36.83, so it's already long. Going towards target one, you set your stop, you set your target, you go to bed. I mean, you have to take trades every hour. Kev, I'm, I'm about worn myself out. I'm going to go take my NyQuil and do just that, go to bed. Um, All right, my man. You know, thank you, everybody, for, for coming in and um, – you know, look, spread the word to everybody you know in crypto that they've got an opportunity to try this tool for two weeks for free. And we're going to be live in the Telegram quite a bit, walking people through how to use it. So if they're not sure, we're going to be there to help. And, you know, this is about, like I said from before, um, this is not about making money for ourselves, but it's about helping you guys make money for yourselves without us having to skim off the top. I mean, we're going to get, we're going to get a little something from the subscription, but um, it's nowhere near what a lot of these other projects skim from you by trading your money and then keeping part of your profit. Well, you get to keep your profit. We're not after your profit. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, team. Thank you, everyone. This has been very, very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, everyone. Guys. Well, I'm so excited. Look, here's another trade that's entered tonight. Sushi entered at 1877. Everything is green here. So I'm just saying, you know, how hard is it to sit there and look at the trend and and find something that makes sense? Find something that makes sense logically. 
So it's not that hard. Very grateful for everybody in the room. I've been going for the last four hours, so I'm going to have to get off. My family's coming and looking at me like, what have you been doing? But we got into a space and then AMA, and then we went over and got into this. And I'm still pumped up. I'm still jumping up and down. I hope you can feel that in my voice, but I got to go be with my family for a little bit. Otherwise, I think I'm not engaged there. So, Mary thank Jane, you, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, just old man. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm so grateful for everyone in the group. Crypto William, first million. So many people to shout out. I'm going to actually shout out everyone. So Dana, the Maniac, Yensta, Raj, Mo, Tim, Dumo, thank you for being in the room. Barry, I'd like to also shout out to Poppy from Opcat and also the president. Uh, Christy, as always, our producer, thank you so much. You are so invaluable to the process. Strike, Cobra, Lizuela. Ans and the Duff, you guys are doing some great stuff. You're going to love the Opcat things for the mod development. First million, a great pleasure. Tarina also as well. Alyssa, thank you very much. And Herd, I appreciate your time. It's KD. I'll see you next week on the AMA. I'll catch you Sunday for the planning session, everyone. Be blessed, be safe, and happy Easter. I'll see you next time. I'm dropping off. Thanks.